All right. Welcome back to the Pulse of Willie and Al. How's it going today, bro? Hey, not bad, not bad. Uh, you know, it's Tuesday here. It's sunny. I uh, can't really complain. Yeah, it's uh, we got our first uh, piece of rain here. Uh, it's about mm. a rain within, I don't know, probably the last month and a half, two months. So it uh, felt kind of nice. But uh, yeah, we're, we're back for a very exciting episode today. Uh, this is episode 52, I Disagree With You, and this is going to be our Picks and Predictions episode for the NFL. Uh, and le let me just give a quick disclaimer on this. This isn't because we dislike each other, uh, but simply just because we have differing opinions on what we think is going to happen, or at least we think we do. For those at home yeah. watching, we have not shared our picks or predictions with each other. So it is going to be a very surprising episode on uh, on who him and I think are going to be the performing players and teams this year in the NFL. Uh, there is going to be no Major League Baseball content this week, and not because we don't love Major League Baseball. We definitely do, but uh, it's football time. So <laughs> yes, sir. And, yeah, we are ready to go. So uh, before we jump into the picks and predictions, let's go through just a, a few Small things in terms of news and some big things too, right? Uh, Matthew Judon getting traded to the Falcons from the Patriots. Now, I know this happened last week. We get that and stuff, but we weren't on last week, so we got to cover it with you guys. Uh, but the Falcons get that uh, pass rusher that they desperately need. How do you think this bodes for them? Did you like the deal? Did you not? Uh, how are you feeling about this? I mean, the Patriots got what they could for him. Um, he only played four games last year. He, the dude's 32 or 33. Like, for the Falcons, this is a low-risk, high-reward uh, situation for them. They needed a pass rusher because they decided not to take one in the draft. Mm -hmm. which we'll never know why. Um, and this really helps them. And if Judon can stay healthy, uh, he's a good pass rusher, man. He gets after the quarterback, gets a lot of sacks, and... Uh, yeah, he, he, it was very clear he wasn't going to play it down in New England this season. And, you know, uh, so I wish him well. And, you know, this really helps Atlanta. And for New England, it furthers the boy. It is another rebuilding season, and it's going to be a long one. Mm -hmm. It could be, definitely. Uh, they Not only did they, they get the pass rusher they need, but uh, I, it gets me thinking, like you mentioned about the draft, what happens if they don't take Penix there and instead they do go pass rusher and then they also trade for Judon? Then you've got a young guy to learn from him. You've got an experienced veteran in there to be able to, to not only lead in the locker room. They say he's a great locker room guy. He's beloved by many different players. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it just it, you kind of get into the what ifs about that. Uh, the other thing they did, which I think is is not as notable, but flew under the radar because the, of the Judon trade, was they signed Justin Simmons, who has been playing at a at least a Pro Bowl, if not an All Pro level, the last few years in Denver. Uh, he was one of the young guys that came in after the No Fly Zone and was just one of the best players on that team. And they didn't re-sign him, and then no teams went after him in the offseason in, in free agency, which was mind-blowing to me. But they bring him in, they pair him with Jesse Bates, and they instantly have one of the best defensive backfields, you know, on the back end in terms of safety. Now, I think they overpaid for A.J. Terrell, so does Bill Belichick. But, uh, you know, I think it's very good having two great safeties. You need two guys that can set the tone, and there are two of them. So... Uh, any thoughts on Justin Simmons at all for you? Or yeah, I overall I, I think just in the grand scheme of things with Atlanta, like I this makes them a little better defensively because I, I think we all thought with Atlanta this year, cool they're going to score points and we think punches, but they're not going to be able to stop anybody. This at least gives them a chance. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know like I. I think this is going to move the needle a little bit for them. I, I still think they need more when it comes to pass rushers. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think Judon is, is the entire answer, but I think it's a start. So, Well, someone's got to step up, and that's that's yeah. what they're going to need. So hopefully Raheem Morris can work his magic, uh, be able to get some, some production out of this defensive unit, 
because like you mentioned, we anticipate at least the offense is going to be better than years past. Uh, but we will, that remains to be seen. They've been very hush hush about whether Kirk Cousins is playing like they're, I don't, I think he's been cleared, but we haven't really seen him on the field in any preseason games. They didn't play Penix in the last game. It makes me wonder if they're going to roll Penix out there week one. I don't think that will happen, but they've just been very secretive about those things. So uh, it remains to be seen. But uh, your boy, Howie Roseman, seems to uh, have does been... It again. Yeah, he does, he does it, it again, again, right? God damn it. <laughs> this guy, uh, this time it's Jahan Dotson, right? They, they take him interdivision from the commanders. Howie Roseman ends up, uh, you know, just fleecing them, it seems like. Because if you look at this trade, yeah, they traded a third-round pick, but Philly's supposed to be pretty good this year. It's likely going to be at the end of the third round, which is essentially a fourth-round pick at that point. Yeah, they gave up two sevens, but they're not really worried about that. They've got a deep roster as it is. And then the, they also get the commander's fifth-round pick, which likely is going to be a high fifth-round pick closer to a fourth round. So it's almost like they traded off as is for, a, you know, maybe 15, 20 spots difference in the draft and two seventh rounders. And they got a, a decent player that's going to fill right, fill their slot role for them. Uh, so I just, I need to ask you, like, how does he continue to work this magic? Well, I think what's wild is like, Philly was already all set on receiver and they just were like, you know what? We could just, you know, let's just let's just hoard them, and that, that's kind of what this kind of feels like. Mm -hmm. They, uh, do, I, I think he's going to benefit a lot from in those three wide receiver sets where it's AJ Brown and Devonta Smith. Like, I, I think he's, he's never get getting doubled. Looks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if he can somehow manage to stay healthy and get open, like I think he can put up some big numbers. Yeah, I I agree with you on on that. I, I definitely think he could benefit a lot from playing in a very elite offense possibly one of the top five in the league uh my question is is if you're a gm and you're sitting there and you obviously have good players on your team every nfl team has good players and your phone rings and you see it's howie roseman what are you doing picking up the phone yeah, why I... like he's done this to five six teams now yeah, and it keeps doing it. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. Um, yeah, I, if I if I ever see Howie Roseman's number, just don't pick up. Yeah, don't pick up. It's if the moment you pick up, he says whatever combination of words, and then you are under his spell. And it, it, what's weird from a Washington standpoint is I I actually thought that Washington was going to be okay this year. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand trading Dotson. I, they were just not, I think with the new coaching regime, they just weren't happy with him. And they felt like the guy behind him was going to actually, it was actually ahead of him on the depth chart. All of us were thinking, oh no, it's going to be Dotson, but it really wasn't Dotson at all. Uh, and they weren't happy with him. He had some good success his rookie year and put up some really good numbers. Uh, but it just seemed last year he was just phased out of it. Uh, and Diami Brown is just the dude there. It's not, I mean, you've got Terry McLaurin about 10 feet of shit and then the next receiver, but Jahan Dotson was not it. And they wanted to be able to make a move. And I, I also think that they probably want to get Luke McCaffrey. They didn't want to deal with that of who's going to be in the slot Dotson McCaffrey. I think they just want to get him kind of in there, get reps and be able to move forward from there. Uh, but we will see, uh, let, let's see who he fleeces next. Uh, we still got what yeah. another 10 weeks before the trade deadline. So <laughs> let's see what ends up happening. But, uh, in other news, uh, let's actually stay in the division real quick. Uh, big deals come coming through on CD lamb. Uh, yeah, very happy for him. Reportedly it's a hundred million guaranteed. And I, my next thought is like, okay, is Dak next? Is Micah next? Uh, Jerry Jones was like, uh, some of the tweets that this guy sends out. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't want to make the comparison. I can't. We're not political on this show. But uh, 
he's unhinged some of the stuff that he's writing on on x and i i can't believe that he's saying this stuff it's almost like every time he says it his lawyer has to remind him by the way every time you say that you know we're going to owe him another five million it's going to be another five million and another uh it just and plus they're going to eat the three million in fines because he was still on his rookie deal so yeah I, I the thing that worries me with this is C D Lamb missed all of camp. Mm-hmm. And like I understand that he probably was keeping himself in shape. But like those camp reps are valuable. And I I just I worry a little bit that you're gonna it's gonna take him a few weeks to get kind of get going. And and then he's gonna start pressing and that's how you get hurt. Like Yeah. I wanna point it out and I know it's probably not gonna make you happy, but I agree with you that the reps are extremely vital. In New York Jets camp, Aaron Rodgers was saying how Robert Sala had them run more plays and more reps than they'd ever run in camp before, like double per day. And I think that's going to make a big difference because when you're in good rhythm, when you have a good understanding, good rapport with the people you're playing around. Now, I think he's one of those guys that can plug and play, but I don't expect him with 15 targets the first week. I think no. maybe they throw six or seven, give him a few plays off, get his legs under him. They say he's an absolute stud when it comes to conditioning, how much he runs. They say he never he could he could run the whole game and then run another game right after because he's he's that good. But I don't know. Still has concerns, and I know it kind of makes you wonder about it too. Uh still no update on Jamar Chase. But I will say the difference between him and the next guy we'll mention is Jamar is actually holding in and it seems that he's doing practice drills. So there's even though there's no update on uh, even though there's no update on the contract situation, it gives you the feeling that they're moving towards something like that. Whereas Brandon Ayuk is just, ooh, that's a rough looking situation. So. How do you feel about both of these? How do you think it's going to impact the the season, the locker room, stuff like that? Um, first of all, with Jamar Chase, if his contract isn't more than C.D. Lamb's, like, what are we doing? Like, just what are we doing? Like, to me, Jamar Chase is a better player than C.D. Lamb. Hmm. I'll say it. Like, uh, I I just I, I think with Chase, like he's he's smart. Like he knows that he still like has to play. Mm-hmm. Um, and he still has to get in those reps with Burrow because those are important. Um, so I, I like what he's doing. Uh, and and Ayuk, like, at this point, you could tell me that he's going to get traded to the XFL, and I'll believe it. Like, I'll believe anything at this point because at one point he was going to the Patriots. So, yeah, um, you're you're talking with Ayuk, right? Yeah, Ayuk. yeah, yeah. I just. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, that situation, I feel like it's going to have some sort of impact on the locker room. Uh, I I almost think it could s- kind of screw over the 49ers in terms of their season. Now, they have great playmakers on the team, but instilling that Trent Williams is still not there. It, it's, yep. I mean, there that's not stuff I want to be dealing with at all. At all. Uh, that doesn't feel good. And I don't know, I don't envy John Lynch right now, uh, him being in that situation, because those are two premier players on your team. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Ayuk, but Trent Williams is arguably the best left tackle in football. Uh, you don't want him upset, and you need him there. The- you know what's going to you know what's gonna happen with Trent Williams? The same thing that happened with Justin Houston. Uh, last year, week one, Chiefs kind of get, get kind of rolled by Detroit, and they're like, all right, we need this guy. Oh, Chris Jones. Chris Jones, Chris, yeah. Yeah. Chris Jones. Justin Houston, that's a deep cut. Yeah, I was uh, like, wow, that's a – I was like, man, he's pulling it out. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, but I think the 49ers are going to quickly realize, like, shit, we, our offense revolves around Trent Williams protecting mm-hmm. uh, Brock Purdy and letting – opening those holes for McCaffrey. Yeah. Uh, like, I – I just, I don't know, this day and age in football where it's like arguing constantly about money, it does not feel good. Uh, so hopefully they're able to get that figured out and and remedied. But uh, it's yeah. also, uh, this week is kind of a 
a happy week for some, but a, a largely a pretty sad week because tomorrow is the cut down day. And there's a lot of people I, I know from players standpoint, standpoint and coaches standpoint, it's not a fun day uh, no. because a lot of guys are out there grinding. They've been grinding for a long time to try to make this team. And yeah, there's probably a good like 15, 20 guys on the roster that know they're going to make it just about. Yeah. Uh, maybe even less than that. Right. But it's scary because you don't want to. S- Some of these guys lives depend on and their families are depending on them. They're getting calls every day like, hey, you making the team like how's it going? Like who's looking good at camp? All of this stuff. It's just not a fun thing. So we just you know, I I want to wish those players best of luck. And I really hope some of their dreams do come true. I know not everyone's will. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and also, too, this is the time, too, where you see a couple, like, surprising ones. Like, Green Bay just got rid of their kicker. Yeah. Last season. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, I, we're going to talk about when we get to that division. That division suddenly, for me, has got really easy to pick. And, uh, yeah, we'll we'll get into that. But, yeah, like. It's just you always you always see like one or two that you're like oh that guy got cut weird, um, but like guy like Carlson had a bad year last year for him like he yeah. was shaky. Yeah, it's uh, uh, again it's it's just not fun to see some of that stuff go down, uh, and I know yeah. within the next few days we're going to see a lot more guys get cut, uh, and we'll also possibly see some trades uh, as well. So yeah, um, but. Enough of that somberness. Uh, on to the fun part of the segment, uh, which is going to be our picks and predictions. And uh, this is where, like, we're going to make bold predictions, especially me. You're going to tell me I'm wrong Ooh, I, last or I'm year, crazy. I the Jets to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I think let's, both let's of us not... were very wrong about what was going to happen. I picked Cincy and Philly in the Super Bowl. Who who did you have the Jets playing? Was it Philly? Uh, I think it was. Yeah, I think I was on a Philly or San Francisco. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, San Francisco is yeah. better, but uh, historically speaking, this is where both of us are just utterly and unapologetically wrong. So yeah. Yeah. we're going to do our best this year, put our best foot forward, and no, we're not making mistakes anymore. So this, you can take it to the bank on what yeah. we're going to do. So uh, let's start. We're not, we're not dumb any longer. We're smart. Yeah. We're smart. We learn. Yeah. So uh, AFC North, we'll start with them. Uh, Al, why don't you start it off? Who do you have as the AFC North champs? I really thought about this. And um, I think to me, and I I think not a lot has been said about this, but the Ravens signing Derrick Henry is a huge deal. I, I think Henry still has like one more really good season in him. And I think the Ravens are going to be the beneficiaries of that. And you're going to, like, I think you're going to see Lamar run less because he doesn't have to. Mm-hmm. Because you have a 260-pound running back <laughs> who can run a 4-4 just barreling down the field at you. Like, you know, you can save your legs. Uh, and I, I really think when it comes to it, like, I I wanted, I thought about it long and hard with Cincinnati, and I... I just don't trust the injury that Burrow had was one of those like super rare injuries. Mm-hmm. And that worries me a little bit. And also too, we're in the like what feels like year four of Joe Burrow. Oh, hey, we got offensive lineman to protect him and they never do. Uh, the thing that does that the thing that with Cincinnati that does help them is they play a really easy schedule. Mm. Uh, but I, I really think this is the Ravens again this year. I, they still have a really good defense. Uh, you have the reigning MVP coming back, and you added Derrick Henry to that. Like I, I'm gonna take the Ravens here. Okay, uh, yeah. I'm go- I'm going to respectfully disagree. Uh, okay. And and I here. I do really a lot of the points that you brought up resonate uh, with me. I, I definitely feel Derrick Henry still has good football left in him. I I like the signing. I think it's brilliant because what it, were they not able to do in the playoffs last year? They weren't able to run the ball against Kansas City. Actually, they really just stopped running the ball. Yeah. Uh, and that was uh, – this gives a guy that he's Mr. December, uh, and he's never really played for a great 
playoff caliber team. And this gives him an opportunity to do that. My concern is they've lost three of their starting linemen from last year. And you can have Derrick Henry or Christian McCaffrey running the ball. But if you and, and I are blocking, well, maybe you, uh, you know, might block him better than I can. But if I'm if I'm the one blocking, doesn't matter how good he is, it, it's, it's really going to be difficult for them. I still yeah. don't think that they fully address the wide receiver position in the way that I'd like to see it. This has been the fourth year in a row we've heard about Rashad Bateman being that guy, looking great in camp. Yeah. It just, I don't know. It's maybe he's amazing, but I'm kind of leaning that it's not going to be that way. Uh, With Cincinnati, and Cincinnati's going to be my pick, I think Joe Burrow's on a mission, and I feel... I feel like when you have a guy like that, that is as determined as he is, he's going to figure out ways to win. And all this team needs to do, again, I'm picking them to win the division, but even if they make the playoffs, they're instantly one of the most dangerous playoff teams. Uh, because this is the only team that's proven, uh, and not not the team because it's changed quite a bit in, in years. Uh, but Joe Burrow's been the only quarterback to successfully take down Patrick Mahomes. And, in Kansas City, no less. Yeah, in Kansas City, and do it multiple times, and that yeah. is that is something that you should have never allowed to happen because it gave him the confidence to know he can do it. Uh, yeah. Now, I just think this is going to be their year. I really like the attitude of T. Higgins, from what I saw. Yeah, he's disappointed he didn't get a deal, but he's still at camp. He's still busting his butt. And I really think that this team is going to have a good opportunity to be able to to be successful this year and win the division. So that's that's my pick for uh, for the AFC North. I think Cincinnati's going to make the playoffs. I, I, you and I agree can at least agree on that. I yeah. think Cincinnati's making the playoffs. And I I I agree with you t- too that I think Baltimore is going to make the playoffs. I just have concerns about uh, them winning the division. You know, for a minute, I thought I was going to pick Cleveland, and then I saw that Chubb was going to miss the first four weeks, and I was like, that, and not if to, we're talking about winning a division, like, that." Not uh, to mention, like, Deshaun Watson is, like, still hurt. <laughs> like, he's still having shoulder pain. We, I don't know. This, this guy hasn't played good football in four years. I don't yeah. really know what, even with Jameis there, I don't know why they let go of Flacco. It just the moves they made in the offseason just blow my mind. Knowing that Nick Chubb was injured, uh, figuring that he's probably not going to be back for the start of the season, and even if he does come back, notoriously the only guy that had a great season after an ACL tear was Adrian Peterson, and no one yeah. is him. Uh, he's yeah, he's that dude. He's in a category on his own. Uh, but we will see. So let's uh, let's move on to your favorite uh, division, the AFC East. Okay. I literally have no idea about this division. <laughs> I, this is the division I spent the most time on. And like yep. I talked myself into every team except the Patriots at one point. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I can see that. And I, and I just because I'm picking them to win the division does not mean I'm picking them to win the Super Bowl. And just I need I but I, I think it's gotta be the Jets, man. Yeah. I do. Like I, they're just too talented on both sides of the ball to to not make the playoffs. Like, I, like to win the division. Like that's I just I don't know what we're doing. Like, I, yeah, I don't I, know, man. Like, I don't like betting against Aaron Rodgers because I agree with you. I'm picking the Jets as well, and I, I think the the majority of it is, and I don't want to. I don't want to bet against Josh Allen. I don't like doing that because we can get proven wrong doing that. He's a he's a he's quite a good player and a good playmaker. I don't think he's got a great supporting cast. The Patriots, we know what's going on with them. Miami still has a lot of pass rushers on defense that are still banged up uh, and still not ready to start the season. Yeah, their offense is great, but we've seen what happens as soon as they start playing playoff teams and, until they prove differently. I think you, yeah. you got to go with the Jets, man. Uh, and that was the reason I didn't pick the Dolphins because I was in the same boat as you. It's like, man, Miami has the best offense in this division, and it's not even close. Mm-hmm. But I then remembered last year 
Like they started out with gangbusters and then they went and played Buffalo and Buffalo hung 48 on them. And that just kind of started this weird slide with them. And I, I just don't trust them to win a big game. I don't. Yeah. I said that about Detroit last year and then Detroit proved me wrong by winning a bunch of big games. Mm -hmm. And granted they did lose in the playoffs, but it showed you quite a bit about that team and how they can fight and battle. And I think they added a lot to their team in the, in the off season to ensure that they have a chance to get back. Um, But yeah, I, anything else you wanted to say about the Jets at all? No, I, I really think you're going to see a big year from Garrett Wilson. Mm -hmm. I really do. Because I think he's going to have a real quarterback throwing to him for once. And I, I, yeah, I just, I just think this is the year. The thing that, the thing that scares me with the Jets is if you were to rank the four head coaches in that division, Robert Sala's fourth on that list. Yeah. Um... And he does weird, he does weird shit sometimes. You're like, why, why are we, what? Why are you doing this? And that worries me a little bit. Well, so that like, let's look at the, the one's an uh, one's an ex player, right, Gerard Mayo, but he's kind yeah. of unproven. We haven't really seen much of him yet, so I don't know that I can rank him a, ahead of Sala. Sala has had success, but he hasn't had healthy, uh, like a healthy quarterback there. I yeah. I don't like him bringing in Hackett. I don't like some of the things he does. So I agree with you on that. Um, and I chalk that up to maybe him being a defensive minded coach. But then you've got a former wrestler up in in Buffalo who has been successful over the you know the the last half decade. They've put out good teams, and then you have Miami's newest cocaine dealer uh, in in Miami. <laughs> I mean, is, his look is wild right now. He is I'm just concerned for it. Yeah, he is, but he's just uh, he is the ultimate bro, especially with the press. It's too funny to listen to him so i do i do think with this division i think this is the division you get three playoff teams from Ooh, i do because i because you know my theory on josh allen plug josh allen into like with a bunch of dudes you're gonna get 11 wins automatically and i think with miami they have enough offensively that like they'll be all right Mm -hmm. they're just they're they're Gonna, it's gonna be a lot of shootout games. I think you're gonna see with Miami early on. I can not stop somebody. I guess I could see that. Yeah, I'm not gonna disagree with that. I I could see that. Um, yeah. all right, and uh, let's move on. AFC South. I think you and I have the same team. Yeah, here. yeah. It's the Texans. Yep. The, just the improvements they made in the off season. They showed us what they got last year. I think the Colts will make it tough. Uh, I think Tennessee yep. could be better than expected. I. I expect Jacksonville to be... Uh, Everybody keeps saying that with Tennessee, and I just don't see it. I, I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills, because I just don't see it with them. I, I just think Callahan's going to gonna be good for that team, and I really think he's going to be able to work with Levis and provide him something that maybe he didn't get from Vrabel. Uh, I, I'm not yeah. saying Vrabel's a bad coach. I don't think he is. Uh but I just think Callahan brings in a, a good offensive mindset and he's going to, they're going to throw the ball. They are going to sling the rock, man. And yeah. it looks like DeAndre Hopkins is going to be healthy for the beginning of the year, but Hopkins Ridley and Tyler Boyd, those are three big receivers for him to be able to yeah. throw to. And all three of them provide matchup problems for people. So I think what it is with Tennessee is I just don't trust them defensively. Okay. All right. That's, I, I, that's, yeah, like when I really think about it for a second, I think it's just I don't trust them defensively. Like offensively, yeah, they look pretty good, but they just they made some good moves. Rand Carthon as GM did did some really good stuff, yeah. bringing in Snead and Awuzie. Like uh, I don't know, we'll we'll see. But I I'm just saying, pencil it in now. They okay. could they could be a surprise team this year. Um, is, this, is this your surprise team to make the playoffs? I don't know if they're a playoff team, but I think they could be better than people expect. I also think Indianapolis could be a playoff team if Richardson stays healthy, but that remains to be seen. I think Shane Steichen is, is brilliant, partially because his name's yeah. Shane, but also because he's he's good. Uh, yeah, I do know a lot of brilliant Shanes, so... That is yeah. true. Well, you know yeah. one really brilliant one, you know another. <laughs> so... Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I feel like we both agree on that. 
Um, and I think we're probably going to agree on the AFC West, too. Yeah, I I think, though, I think, so it, I think we both think it's Kansas City. And hear me out on this. I don't think Kansas City's running away with this division this year. Who do you think is competing in this division with them? I think it's the Chargers. I have talked myself into it. Wow. I have talked myself into that I think that what you're going to get with this team this year is they are just going to run the ball down your throat. They're going to do it a hundred times. Again. They're going to do it a hundred times. They're going to, they're going to hit you in the mouth. I, and I, I think, I don't think they're going to win the division, but I think they're going to be the team that plays everyone's everyone tough. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they're going to, a lot of teams are going to take them seriously. Yeah. I, I don't think so either, but Jim Harbaugh and his teams, they play sound football, fundamentally good football and he's not going to keep players on his roster that can't figure out how to how to do the small things correct. And from what I've seen, uh, from what I've read out of camp, like Joe All is just destroying dudes. Yeah, yeah. Like already, and you're like, well, okay. Like now, let me. If you're destroying. If you're destroying one of the Bosa brothers in practice, like yeah, you seem good enough to me. Like, yeah. and he's. Yeah. He's there for the next decade. Him and Rashawn Slater, they're going to be awesome yeah. together. Uh, those are two very good bookends there. Uh, so let me ask you something real quick about the Raiders because it feels to me they made some, uh, I think, one of the best offseason additions bringing in Christian Wilkins on the defensive line. Uh, I agree. And I think he's going to be a savage there. I think they are one quarterback away from being good. And if if – yeah. This season goes by and Dallas does not re-sign Dak. If he ends up in Vegas with Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, Brock Bowers, uh, even even the tight end, man, I'm trying to think of his name before that they had, the the one they drafted the year before who was really good, uh, Michael Mayer. Uh, Mm. I I think that could be a very good team. Um, But... I just was curious if you think the same. Um, I mean, I think you can speak to this better than most. You watched a full year of Gardner Minshew on your team last year. <laughs> like, it is that is what that is. Like, he's good at playing fine. small ball, and he's yeah fine. You're right, but, like, but if you really need to rely on him to win a game, as you saw at the end of last season. That's just not him. I think um, Indy has a better line than Vegas does, and I think they have a better defense uh, than than Vegas does. Uh, and that's my big thing with Vegas is I don't – first of all, they don't have a quarterback. Second of all, they don't have an offensive line to protect that quarterback. Mm-hmm. And I think very... that's a real – that's, re- that's going to be a real issue for them. Makes it very difficult, man. It really does. And um, I – Hear me out. I think that if this season goes, because I, I think the Raiders are going to be one of the, I think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league this year. Ooh. I, I think defensively they're going to be in a lot of games. I think they're going to be a lot like New England, where defensively they can hang in games. But like, if you don't have any offensive line protection, like, how are you getting the ball to Devonte Adams? Yeah. How are you getting it to Brock Bowers? Like, I, yeah, man. They and got I, playmakers I think, too. It's it's too bad. And I think too that if this season starts out really poorly, don't be shocked if you have Devontae Adams asks for a trade. Oh I don't see that happening. Just because I feel like he's vibing with really well with Antonio Pierce, but that's a guy that really wants to win. And winning yeah. is really, really important to him. More than his own personal success, he wants to win. So uh, I could see that I could see it ending up that way too. Uh, I'm not going to say I'll go so far as a trade mid season, but it could be after the season that he's like, listen, you got to get someone in here. We got to figure this out. Uh, yeah. I don't have too many years left in the league. Let's, let's figure this out. Um, I just, oh, we didn't mention the Broncos, but I just feel like they're going to be really bad. Um, oh yeah. 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 Th- this is going to be a division where like the top is good and the bottom is bad. Yeah. And I think all of it falls on Sean Payton's shoulders this year. This is his team. Now he got rid of the quarterback. He didn't want, uh, I, I feel bad because I think Bo Nix could be a good quarterback and I just hope he's able to figure it out in this system. Um, yeah. Cause I saw some good things out of him from preseason. I really did. 
Um, yeah, same. But same. Uh, Kansas City, heavy is the head that wears the crown, man. Um, yeah, I agree. And But uh, I, I think this season is going to wear on him because I think, like I said before we started, like you've played in four Super Bowls in five years. That kind of playoff run, like you're good. That's all the extra playoff games that they have played mm-hmm. is almost like a, another full season. Well, that's why, like, and I hate to bring in basketball, but that's what kind of what they say about LeBron, like how much extra basketball he's played, yeah. how much extra football Tom Brady played, right? It's it's crazy. Yeah. All yeah, right. No. Uh, so let's uh, move on to the NFC now. We'll start with the... We'll go in the same order, right? NFC South. Uh, who do you have coming out of there? This... I mean, I think it's Tampa Bay. I think that it is. Um, but I think with the moves that Atlanta has made, I, I think it's at least worth mentioning that they're going to at least, I think, be a little tougher in games now. And I think... Getting rid of Arthur Smith was the best thing they could have done. That's addition <laughs> by subtraction. Yes. Uh, if he had been around this year, he would have been my new uh, Brandon Staley. Okay. Yeah. We'll ask yeah, that. We'll, we'll ask that after we get through these because I want to know who who's going to be your new guy. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm going to slightly disagree with you. Uh, you think it's Atlanta? Can Can I Can I do like an ad lib to it almost like it? Oh sure. Yeah. If Okay, so let's do a hypothesis statement. If Kirk Cousins plays, then Atlanta will win the division. If Kirk Cousins doesn't play or gets hurt, I don't think Atlanta will win the division. Now, I'm still going to pick Atlanta because you can't can't pick someone and then switch it up. But I'm I sure you can. Oh, do whatever you want. Well, I don't want to I don't want to switch it. I want to I want to be be fair. So, I'm going to pick Atlanta. Just because I feel like the moves they made are great. I feel like Raheem Morris understands that he's got a Ferrari in the garage and he's going to use it. Uh, he's yeah. not just going to bring it out on sunny days. He's going to bring it out in the rain and tear it up too. So I really want to see them really run, uh, you know, kick the tires on Bijan Robinson hard and really run him this year. Uh, I wanted. I don't want to see some, them bring in Algier inside the 10 yard line. I don't want to see that happen. I agree. Um, can I ask you a question? And this was the thing that was like hard for me to pick the Jets. I think this we're going to really, this year is going to be really interesting because you have two quarterbacks in Rodgers and, and Cousins mm-hmm. who are almost 40 coming off Achilles injuries. Mm-hmm. History says that those injuries are really hard to come back from. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I'm really interested to see. And I think that was my reasoning for not picking Atlanta, which I know seems doesn't make sense when I picked the Jets, but I just – Rodgers at least went down in week one of the season. Cousins, like, went down, like, middle-ish of the season. Yeah, I I definitely share with that – share that with you in that I'm concerned – uh, I also know that Cousins didn't really amplify his rehab to come back. Uh, he wanted to be able to come back, but he knew the, the season was not on the table for him, where I feel like Rodgers accelerated his re- rehabilitation. Uh, I I have faith in Kirk Cousins. He's always he I've always liked him as a quarterback, and if he's 80% of what he was before, He's a drastic upgrade to this offense, and they win this division. Yeah. Um, but a lot of things have to go in order. I also am about to make a very bold prediction. I don't think Carolina is the worst team in this division. And I know that sounds crazy, but... I think Bryce Young is going to – I think they're going to figure some things out, and we may see some good stuff out of him this year. I, I That's so funny you mentioned that. I'm just about to make the statement. The top of this division is going to be decent, but the bottom of this division is going to be straight ass. Yeah. And I was like – and I was going to use Carolina as an example. Like, <laughs> that's okay. I Yeah, I, I think they're going to be marginally better, but like – You think they're so going to be worse than Captain Checkdown? 
Yeah, because at least New Orleans has players. Now, uh, yeah, New I, Orleans I, also has Dennis Allen as a coach. Yeah. Which he seems to hate his players. I don't get that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dennis Allen, actually, I'm going to be honest with you, he really is in the running for my new Brandon Staley. <laughs> I hate him. He hasn't time. really done much to me, but I feel you on that. When I hear what he says, it's kind of hard to make the team from the hot tub or you the training room. Is, like, it's once, mad funny. Once a year, I'll tune into a Saints game, and it's always a 425 game. And I'm like, all right, yeah, cool. I'll watch the Saints. And then I'm fucking, I, for three hours, I am just bored to tears yep. because I'm just watching four-yard checkdown passes. <laughs> and after three hours of that, Shane, I just want to go crazy. Well, you're like, how did Alvin Kamara get 15 catches out of the backfield? <laughs> they could have just ran him 15 times, but instead, <laughs> and I loved it for fantasy, but my God, was it bad. <laughs> my yeah, you God. Have to sweat that out with him. Yeah. yeah. Man, okay. Yeah, well, I... Listen, if Tampa Bay wins the division, which I know you picked them, I would not feel bad. I think Godwin moving back to the slot is a very good decision for this offense, and I think it's going to pay dividends for them. But I also think another year, they showed a lot of faith in the offseason, and it happened so long ago, it feels like it was two to three years ago. But they showed a lot of faith in Baker Mayfield. They showed a lot of faith in Mike Evans. And both of them have good rapport with each other. Same with Godwin. And Rashad White is actually, an, I feel, sometimes an underrated running back. Also, let, real quick, I, I think because it's been so long ago, we forget about this. Tampa is a drive away from beating Detroit and going to the NFC title game. That is true. Uh, they, like, they also upgraded their line through the draft as well. Uh, yeah. Graham Barton, I believe, they yeah. ended up bringing in a center which I felt like that was one of the weak spots on their offensive line and why, yeah, tear it up, yeah, baby. That's right. Woo! All oh, right. Line, to go. Ah, yeah. 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 And it's not even they're waiting. You just have to jump in as they're driving by. Yeah, third, third story window, fast and furious. Style. Yeah. All right. Um, no, I just, I, I think that was one of the weak spots on um, on their offensive line. And now they get to shore that up with a guy that was very, very good in college yeah. uh, and a, a very, a very cerebral guy as well. And you need that at the position. It, I mean, I, it's going to be interesting to see Philly this year with without Jason Kelsey. Um, uh, I don't feel too bad, though, because Jason Kelsey just got paid one hundred million dollars for his podcast. So yeah. he's doing all right. Yeah, he's doing OK. Um, yeah, he's doing all right. All right, let's uh let's move on. NFC North. <laughs> okay. So I need to start this with a disclaimer. Oh okay. boy, here we go. Wait. Okay. So I watch Hard Knocks every season. Okay. I I'm obsessed with this show. Okay? <laughs> now, I'm not picking the Bears to win the division, but just hear me out for a minute, okay? Just hear me out. Good, because I was worried about that. It's not the craziest thing we've ever heard, okay? It, it, I'm just saying it's not crazy. Because I, Caleb Williams in the preseason, and I know it's preseason. I, I understand that. But, like, Caleb Williams is quickly becoming the dude. And he understands that. He knows his role. And he knows the pressure that is on him. And I think the Bears are going to be better than a lot of people give them credit for. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but I think they're going to be a team in, like, week 18 that, like, is contending for a spot in the playoffs but needs, like, three things to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I'm just – it's not inconceivable. No, it's not. Like, it's not. look at the defense. Like, look at the defense they have. Their defense is pretty solid. Mm-hmm. They have another year of playing together. They added the playmakers. Receivers that, the receivers that Caleb Williams has. Sweet Jesus. Yeah. Like, I, I'm just saying. Um, this was a hard division for me to pick, weirdly, too. I'm kind of out on the Packers. I, I, I just think this is a, a step back for the Packers this year because I think Jordan Love got all that money, and I – Sometimes you kind of see this with, with dudes. They get all that money and they, they really try to press. 
And I, I just think that like, I think this is a step back from them this year. Okay. Um, and I, I think the Vikings, I think this is a lost season for them. They already have team a uh, year from hell written all over them with all the, the DBs that they've lost yeah. literally and figuratively. Like, yeah. um, so I, I think to me, it's, it's the Lions. Okay. Um, the thing that worries me a little bit, and remember the start of last year we talked about this. Remember last season when we were like, boy, that that playoff loss against for the Chargers against Jacksonville, that that can kind of leave some stink mm-hmm. going into the next season. And I just I think it's something that like maybe look out for. Okay. Jameer Gibbs is already dealing with the hamstring thing, uh, which isn't great. I think they're going to be fine because I think Dan Campbell's a much better head coach and Dan Campbell's not going to let them let that happen to them. But I just, it's just something to look out for. I think Detroit's going to win the division. I think they're going to win it. I, I think they, they're going to win 13 games this year, probably. Uh, but just something to look out for. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that would put because them that, at what? Like 13 and four. Yeah. 13 and four. And four yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, like, you and I watched that Lions playoff game together last year. Mm-hmm. That was as horrific of a loss as you could ask for. Yeah, that was uh, that was crushing to see because we were kind of both excited that Detroit yeah. was was playing so well, uh, and kind of like, hey, you you got to get points when you can because when San Francisco wakes up, it could be dangerous. But conversely, Brock Purdy showed a lot in that game, and I feel like that gets overridden yeah. by. Detroit just lost it. It's not Brock Purdy won. Yeah. It was Detroit lost it. And it happened um, so quickly too. Which it it, it yeah. did. It was a very quick turnaround. Um I assume you have Detroit as well. Uh I do. I just wanted to echo uh just a, a, a little sentiment here on on Chicago. Uh Caleb Williams, when he was 16, Patrick Mahomes started playing in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And and started appearing very magical in the way that he played the game. And I feel like you're going to start seeing quarterbacks like Caleb Williams start to come into the NFL that mirror their play after him. Uh, That's why you're seeing these no look passes, the throws deep down right on the sideline dime, you know, a dime pass right there. Uh, The quick windows, the, uh, kind of the scrambling ability that it's Justin Fields could run the ball and get away from people, but he didn't have that elusiveness. I want to say, I don't think Caleb Williams is faster than him at all, but he's got that elusivity. That is just, it, he'll leave guys in the dust just by juking them. Uh, he has that pocket presence, which I've seen early in preseason with mm-hmm. him, where like he knows what a play's breaking down. And he's not like a because you see you see it with some quarterbacks who just take off immediately, yeah. At the first hint of pressure, Caleb Williams will at least stand in there until the last possible second. He's like, "All right, no, gotta go." Like, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and I just think, yeah, the, the the table's set for them to do very well there. It's gonna be he's gonna have a lot of tests early and often. Uh, but I think the schedule doesn't ver- get very difficult until. Week nine for them. Yeah. I think that's when it starts to get difficult. I do have Detroit winning this division. I like the upgrades they've made. I'm a believer in guys like Jared Goff, Amon Ra, Jameer Gibbs. I'm a believer in Dan Campbell. Uh, they get a few revenge games this year uh, where they'll get to play Dallas again. Um, I, I feel like those are meaningful games that they're going to engage in this year. And we're going to find out a lot about this team and, whether they have that hangover or whether they're capable of, of getting to that, you know, over the yeah. hump. Um, because the expectations are th- for Detroit. It feels like expectations Super Bowl. Of the Super Bowl are a bust. Yeah. Not win the Super Bowl, but at least go to the Super Bowl. That's the yeah, floor. And anything less is, is going to be a disappointing season. For them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I get it. I get it. They're one of the most talented teams in the NFC. I, I get it. Like, yeah. I uh I'm I'm very excited to to see them play this year and I feel like every week they are must watch football for me. Uh, Which I've never heard anybody ever say that other than the two, 
like two Lions fans friends that I have in my life. Yeah. And even that, even they will never admit that. But but you you agree that right there if they're on you're gonna watch them, like that. Yeah, like if I'm sur- if I'm surfing the schedule, like I'm 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 pulling them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, NFC East. I think both of us are the same on this as well. Yeah, it's Philly. Okay. And it's and it's and it's I don't even think it's close. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, I see Philly made all these upgrades, right? And Jahan Dotson being the latest one. But I looked through the draft. They drafted Cooper DeGene. And uh, there was another gentleman that they drafted before DeGene in the first round of defensive back. I want to call him Adonai Mitchell, but I know that's not true. Uh, but he is. he looks very good as well. Um, I just think they're going to be very good. They added Barkley on offense. It, it just is they got like CJ Gardner Johnson back. CJ Gardner Johnson comes back. I, yeah. I just they should be healthier this year. And not to mention, people forget you've got Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter up front. Yeah. Oh my God. No yeah. offensive line wants to go up against that at all. Uh, what does concern me a little bit, um, I, I, you, I, I, I feel good about them winning the division. What does concern me, there are two things that concern me. Mm-hmm. One, and, I, and I've been saying this, I, I, I'm worried, I'm worried that the relationship between Sirianni and Hertz isn't great. Mm-hmm. And I, that worries me. Mm-hmm. I, that doesn't. That's not going to really worry me regular season because I think they're going to take care of business. But that, that just that's just something to look out for. Yeah, they they sucked in the second half of last season and they still made the playoffs. And it, it was kind of it came out in the off season like they just Sirianni was an asshole. Like and he and Sirianni get, at least come out and admit that and like, but that relationship still seems kind of frosty. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm a little I'm a little worried about that. Yep. Um, and two, the way the Eagles are putting this this team together weirdly reminds me of the uh, I think it was 2011 Eagles that <laughs> that like dream team. Yeah. Uh, like this team is built much differently, so I think they're going to be fine. But mm-hmm. like I don't know, there's just there's that weird dream team vibe to them that like, and we haven't seen this team play together. And no. Yeah. Also, pencil in your Saquon Barkley injury. It will happen. Okay. Happens every year, it will happen. I hope it doesn't happen with him. I feel like this is the first great offensive line he's running behind, and I, I, I think he could benefit a lot from having guys on the field. They're not going to be able to stack ten in the box against him, so he's no. going to have a better opportunity, especially with guys like AJ Brown, Devonta Smith, and Jalen Hurts. There is just so much trickery that can go around in this offense, and I feel like he's going to be a big beneficiary of that. He's never had that before on on any of the teams he's played on. Uh, And I I say any of the teams, but he never had that on any of the different giant teams that he played on. Um, But, uh, yeah. So, uh, NFC West... If Geno Smith wasn't the quarterback for Seattle, I would pick Seattle to win this division. Okay. I, that, you're a big McDonald's thing. fan. You are I, big. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you that it's going to be such a great – That I just think that's a really good coaching option for them because you saw what McDonald did with that Ravens defense last year. I just think he's going to do the same thing with Seattle, and I think the identity of this team is going to change. I just wish they had somebody other than Geno Smith at quarterback. Yeah, can, can I just ask you something real quick about that? Uh, yeah. With McDonald leaving Baltimore, I mean, you picked Baltimore to win the division, and I don't think that's a bad pick. I don't think it's crazy or anything to, to do that. But do you think that's going to have an effect on Baltimore with him leaving? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I never really took coordinators leaving seriously till last season when Philly lost both of theirs mm-hmm. and what that looked like. Or when New England uh, had two real bad ones. The, God, they've yeah. had two <laughs> bad ones from, since the last time they won a Super Bowl. Those are guys you wish would leave, but they just didn't. <laughs> leave, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. No, I, I, think, I think San Francisco wins this division. Mm-hmm. I don't feel great about it because I don't love 
the vibe coming from that team. It, it's already starting out kind of funky, and I, I just – you got the holdout of, of Trent Williams. You got the holdout of Brandon Ayuk. And while you can kind of get by without Ayuk, you're not getting by without Trent Williams. I promise you. Uh, and I think that if he doesn't start week one, I think you're going to quickly see what a Trent Williams-less offense looks like, and it's not great. It's not great. Um, yeah, I, I still think it's going to be the 49ers. I think they have all that talent. I think they're going to be fine, but they just there's a weird vibe to it. And I, like I said, I wish Geno Smith wasn't the quarterback for the Seahawks, or else I'd pick them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to disagree. Okay, no. So, uh, n- n- listen, I, I, all the points you made were were right. I, I'm not saying they're wrong at all. They, yeah. they are loaded as a team. Uh, they have great playmakers on that team. Uh, Debo, McCaffrey, Kittle. I mean, they're just they're loaded, right? Even without Ayuk, they can get by. I agree. Trent Williams' loss is a big deal. I think Eric Armstead on defense. That's a big loss that they're going to miss as well. Uh, they do have. Guys coming back from injury on on the defensive side, especially in their defensive backfield, and I think that's going to yeah. make a difference. They still have Fred Warner there. They still have uh, Ward. They've still got and Bosa. Yeah, and Bosa. They've got great players on that team. But I think in their final hoorah, I think the Rams actually win this division this year, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I love the emergence of Puka Nakua. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the emergence of Kyron Williams, who I think both are guys that people overlooked last year, not over in not only in fantasy, but also in the draft. And I mm-hmm. think they proved a lot of people wrong throughout the year, especially a year where Cooper Cup started out injured for the first four or five weeks. Um, I think Cooper Cup is back. He's healthy. And I think this offense runs through him. And I really think Matt Stafford is he he's shown even last year in Detroit he can go into a hostile setting and doesn't get shook. I really think yeah. he's going to have a great season. Now the defense losing Aaron Donald, listen, that's very difficult to to overcome. That's the reason I didn't pick them. That was that was my one reason. I was like, boy, losing Donald. It Man, gives that's... it gives me concern, but they took the teammates from Florida State at defensive tackle uh, in the draft this year. Verse and I can't remember the other name, but both of them are coming in. They have rapport playing with each other, and I think McVay always finds a way to get the best out of his team. And I don't think it's going to be different this year. I think obviously Raheem Morris leaving that's a big deal for them, but I just I think the problems in San Francisco are really difficult to deal with on the surface right now and i don't know if that's something they're going to be able to overcome as the season goes it may turn out that it's not an issue at all and it's just next man up one thing i will say i i think seattle could be better i think geno smith i hope he plays better uh but i think one of the surprise teams i don't i'm not going to pick who's going to finish last in this division because i don't like doing that but i don't think it's going to be arizona Oh. And I think okay. Arizona's going to be better this year, a much better team than people are anticipating. They played teams very tough last year. Kyler Murray's back. He's healthy. He played the best football of his entire career in the second half of last season. Yeah. And they just went out and bought him a brand new car in Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, yeah. I, th- did. I yeah. think he is going to be awesome there. Trey McBride is a stud. I think they could be a lot better than teams expect. And I wouldn't be shocked if they knock off some teams that are playoff caliber teams throughout the season. I don't think they're going to win the division. I don't think they're going to win, uh, make the playoffs, but I could definitely see them as a team playing very, uh, very hard throughout the whole season. And I think next year is going to be a very good year for Arizona, uh, depending on how the, how they fill through the draft, free agency, all of that. That's fair. I think the other thing that I was a little worried about with the Rams, Stafford getting up there in age, and those injuries are starting to pile up, man. Mm-hmm. He, and I, I worry about that a little bit. You know, like, he, he held his own last year for the most part, but, like, 
I just I worry Father Time's undefeated and I I feel like it's closing in on Stafford and I it's that's that was that was kind of my other concern with the Rams. Mm-hmm. Uh but I mean if you told me that the Rams made the playoffs, like I wouldn't be shocked. No. Not at all. Nope. Not at all. No. Like I'd be like, okay. I, I could definitely see that happening. Um, yeah, and and that's really what I'm hoping for uh, with the Rams this year is I think they're going to play great, and I, I'm really excited how, to be able to see them. Quick question. How long, how many weeks into the season before the league realizes that they need to double cover Marvin Harrison Jr.? Two weeks? A week? Uh, Five plays? I don't, I don't know. He he yeah, like, he could be the real deal, and I, I just another guy I really want to see. I think the 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 receivers in this year's draft I think are very good, and I can't wait to see all of them in action, uh, and see how they do. Um, yeah, let's uh let's move on real quick. Super Bowl champs, who do you who do you have meeting in the Super Bowl? I have thought long and hard about this. I I think the Eagles get back there for the NFC. And I and I know everybody's blowing smoke up their ass in the AFC, but I I really think Houston's kind of like I think they have the best shot. Okay. Houston and Philly. Yeah. That that could be an insane matchup. I, I think the, the yeah. thing that bodes well for Houston is they are just he is unafraid. To compete he wants to go out there and compete and he he feels like if the ball's in his hands they, he could do anything i think what was really good for houston too was they they won a playoff game and then they got the shit beat out of them mm-hmm. and i think that was really good for them i think they needed that yeah i think they needed to go up against a defense like baltimore and for cj Stroud to be like yeah i need to get better i need to get better at a lot of things yeah, like we, i'm a really good quarterback but like we need to yeah I yep. I agree. I think that was a, a great thing. Very it humbled them quite a bit. And I think when that happens to you, they just learn from it. it really, yeah. uh, it's going to be and I great. think with Philly, they just, I think they have the most talent offensively and defensively. I, I do. And I think that, like, if Sirianni just can't be an ass, if, if Sirianni can just stay out of his own way, mm-hmm. I think they're going to be fine. Yeah. I do. I, I actually, I, yeah. who do you have winning that game, by the way? Uh, Philly. Okay. I'm yeah. I'm actually going to make the same pick I did last year. I am picking Cincinnati and Philly to be in the Super Bowl, and I think this is the year Joe Burrow raises the trophy. So, wow. uh, yeah. Um I okay. think I think they they go into Kansas City again, and I think they beat Patrick Mahomes. Well, so here's my thing. I don't think Kansas City makes it to the AFC title again this year. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I, I okay. Mean, and that's the thing. Like, I, I'll pick Kansas City to win that division ten out of ten times. But like, I all the things that happen to Kansas City in the off season, I don't love. Uh, and I know Andy Reid's a really good coach, and so like they should be fine. But like, I just I worry about this team. This yeah, team there's a lot, a lot of, of football. There's a lot the of noise. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of outside noise that was unnecessary to be be honest yeah like yeah nothing but related like, to football <laughs> well i think too like there hasn't even been a suspension handed out with for she rice yet like that's still coming i don't know if it's coming this year and that's that's the crazy thing is the the closer we get to the season the more i i think to myself it's going to be delayed until after the season that's dumb yeah i i don't know i just i think that's probably going to be the way it is. Um, we'll see, right? We yeah. could be proved wrong. Uh, who do you have for MVP? I think this is CJ Shroud here. I really do. I, I think that he has the weapons. Uh, I, I really do. I think they're, they're going to be one of the best teams in the league this year. Mm-hmm. And I know... I would typically be worried if, like, teams – like, because there's a lot of smoke being blown up their ass with with, with Pat, uh, Houston. But Danico Ryan, as their coach, isn't going to let them 
he's going to keep them pretty grounded. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's, and that bodes well for them. And I think it's, look at all the weapons he has. Like, just that receiver. Yeah. And I don't think Diggs is going to put up big numbers. I think Diggs is going to be a decoy in a lot of this. Mm -hmm. So, or he'll bitch about not getting cat catches. I, I, don't know. I don't see that happening if they're winning. Uh, but who knows? Maybe, like, they were winning in Buffalo and he was complaining about it. So. Yeah. Well, we'll kind of see uh, w what exactly happens. I think it was probably he was made very aware that, like, if you do that here, you're going to be out the door. Uh, that's why they signed him to a one-year deal. But MVP for me, I'm going to pick Jamar Chase. I just think Cincinnati. A receiver. Yeah, I think this is their wow. year. I know it's usually a quarterback award, but I think realistically this could be an incredible year for him. Where if he stays healthy and he goes off, we're talking about a guy that could pro possibly eclipse 20 touchdowns on the season. And I know that's a big number to, to get to, but he's that type of talented that they, he'd have an opportunity to be able to do it. Uh, however, and I know we'll talk about Offensive Player of the Year here, I see that going to a quarterback. And I think C.J. Stroud's going to be the one that that goes to. Uh so what 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 do you think for offensive player of the year? I, I think it's that typically is a receiver award, mm -hmm. and I actually I think that's where Jamar Chase. Gets ah, that award. so we're flip flopping yeah. on him. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, because usually the MVP goes to a quarterback, and usually offensive player of the year goes to a receiver, and I just feel like that's the way it's gone for a while. And I think that, yeah, I I think Jamar Chase is gonna have a monster season. Okay. Because he's mad that he's not getting paid. And like I don't I don't want to have to cover a, a mad Jamar Chase. No. It just that just doesn't seem fun. No, it definitely doesn't. Um okay, so moving on, we've got defensive player of the year. What do you think about that? I <laughs> I, I had the pick of Singletary from Houston. I, I really was like, but I, that defense is so good that I, I think it's, that's, it's not going to matter. Yeah. I, I think that uh, the other Bosa brother, Joey Bosa, I think he's going to be your defensive player of the year. Wow. I think he's due for a comeback. I think that like, I mean, Harbaugh is his coach. Like, I think it's going to bring something out of him. And I think he's just going to wreak havoc on quarterbacks like his brother does. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wow. That that actually isn't really a bad pick at all. Uh, I, I wasn't considering him, and I kind of feel bad about that now because he is a game changer. Uh, I just think this will be the year... Uh, <laughs> I hope in Dallas it will be different, but I'm going to pick Micah Parsons. And the reason I'm going to do that is not, I don't like all the talking he's done in the off season and all of that. And now he's wanting a new contract and all of these things. I get those things, but I feel like the way they're going to play in Dallas is going to be very, very aggressive. And I think they're going to move him around a lot. And I think it will make a very big deal for them. Uh, this year, I, yeah. I I think it's I think he's going to end up doing it. So, Michael yeah, Parsons is my was, pick. I saw that he was taking snaps in camp off the ball as an off ball rusher. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Like that's, yeah, I that's that's a really good pick. Yeah, I, that is. That really <laughs> is. Yeah, it's that's the thing. There's so many good defensive players that it's very yeah. difficult to to kind of choose. But I don't know. I feel like Micah Parsons, he's just a, a matchup nightmare for everyone. And with Aaron Donald not there, I felt like it was an easier pick for me. I feel like TJ Watt has gotten hurt the last couple of years sometimes and banged up. He got snubbed last year, possibly. Uh, Miles Garrett's there too, right? Like there's so many good yeah. players that y you could pick Chris Jones, right? And, and it wouldn't be bad. Um, yeah. But that's, I'm going to go with Micah Parsons this year for it. So. Uh, 
moving on uh offensive rookie of the year this was this was one of the hardest ones that i had to pick mm-hmm. because the the class of stud receivers this year and i think they're all gonna make an impact mm-hmm. I, like I, I know the giants are gonna be probably pretty terrible but like malik neighbors is a dude yeah he's already a dude in camp and like he the thing that scares me with it well like worries me about him is he have gotten into a couple fights in camp mm-hmm. uh and i think that like that's kind of the, the trick with him is if you just get him angry he'll do something dumb and get himself thrown out uh which kind yeah. of dis- which i think will kind of like leave a bad taste in voters mouths i the easy pick what i would say is caleb williams but i yeah. i think that it i think it's gonna be marvin harrison jr I okay. do. I think that dude's gonna be a stud. Mm-hmm. Like he, I think the league is gonna quickly figure out that you have to double cover this guy because he's just bigger, taller, and faster than his dad was. Yeah, I mean that's a great pick, and I, I too feel similar to you that Caleb Williams is probably gonna be a, a shoe in for it just because he's gonna start from yeah. the beginning of the season. People want to give it to the quarterback. He's Hollywood. He's all of this stuff. I'm going to go a little bit of a different direction just because I want to be a little slightly different on it. And I'm going to pick Jaden Daniels. And the reason I'm going to pick Jaden okay. Daniels is I think there is, I think he comes in in a better position than Caleb Williams because there's not as much pressure on him. And I think it will allow him to play looser throughout the season. But I also yeah. think you're going to see him. Caleb Williams has the table set for him, right? Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, uh, DJ yeah. Moore, Romo Duze, he's got playmakers all throughout that offense. You can't really say the same about Jaden Daniels. He's got, yeah, he's got Eckler and Robinson in the backfield. Okay, they're decent running backs. You've got McLaurin, who I think is one of the better wide receivers in the NFL, uh, right a step below the elite. And he's yeah. going to make some incredible catches for him this year. But I think you're going to see him covering up a lot more of the deficiencies there and not having it easily handed to him. And I think he's a very good playmaker. I think you're going to see it out of him. Um, but it will, it remains to be seen, right? That's why we're, that's why we're making the picks. So yeah. Uh, defensive rookie of the year. Who do you have? You're going to love this pick. Uh, Layatu Latu. From oh Indiana my Atlas. God. Okay. Uh, that dude's going to be a monster, a monster. This ends one of two ways. Like, he either ends his career in first season because he has a bevy of neck injuries. Yeah, like, he does. Th- this dude is not long for this league, but I think he's going to be a monster while he's in it. Mm-hmm. I-, I really like that pick. Uh, I think he's going to be great for Indy. I hope he's able to stay healthy because I think he's got a lot that people can appreciate when they watch him. Yeah. Uh, but I, I really want to see him, and especially him – if he's down in a three technique next to DeForest Buckner or they have him split out to the side, like it, it's going to be, that is a good team. Now, Indy just lost one of their defensive ends to an Achilles injury for the season, I believe a few weeks ago. So that does not feel good for them, but I think it's going to give him a chance to probably, probably get some more playing time and see a little more exposure of him. So hopefully he's able to make up for that. Uh, I have a little bit of a deeper cut. Yeah, let's go. Now, I know there was... um, Okay. I know there there was some talk about training camp and what's going on with this particular player. Uh, He plays for Green Bay. I'm going to bring up... I want to bring this up right now because I want to make sure that I don't mess up the guy's name that is playing... uh, that he's competing with. Uh, I think it was Evan Williams that he was competing with, but Javon Bullard out of Georgia is a rookie. And just some of the, the plays that I saw him make in college made me, it reminded me of, I don't want to say Ed Reed because that's not right. Uh, And no one's like Ed Reed, but he's very good with the ball in his hands. He delivers blows like you have, like you don't commonly see in the NFL. He's an extremely physical player. And I think him in the back end with Xavier McKinney, uh, I 
I think they're going to be awesome together. So, yeah. Um, I just, I think it's going to be a- incredible to be able to see them. And I really, I think he's going to be incredible. Uh, the guy that I'm, I'm really thinking of, and I, I kind of brain farted on his name, but Eric Berry. I don't know if you remember him out of, Oh yeah, yeah. he played yeah. for the university of Tennessee, but he came in, played a little bit for the chiefs, uh, moved around to a few different teams in the league, but, uh, he was very, very good. And he, when, uh, when I watched him play, I felt like this guy could intercept the ball on every single play. And his, his season didn't really, uh, his career didn't really end the way I wanted it to. When he was playing with the chiefs, he did come back. I think he, Oh, that's right. He had Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, which was, I mean, he, an unbelievable athlete to, to watch play. If you are wondering about him, go and watch clips of this guy. It was incredible to watch him be able to, to play with the ball in his hands. Uh, yeah. His Jav- career was a, a giant one. Yeah. Really. Like, uh, Javon Bullard though, really, I think hits harder than him. And I think is that dude as well. He brings that excitement to football and I really cannot wait. I think he's going to be defensive rookie of the year this year. Uh, that's that's who my pick is. So, um, yeah. So uh, the last one we've got, right? Coach of the year, D'Amico Ryan for me. Yeah, um, it's a shame he didn't win it last year. He should have. Yeah, uh, but then like you realize that Kevin Stefanski essentially had uh, he led Joe Flacco to the playoffs. So like that alone gets you coach of the year. Like you, you'll win that in my book every year if you can do that. So. Yeah, I I think it's probably going to be him as well. Uh, it doesn't always go to the team that makes it to the Super Bowl. It just no, it just it, doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, I could also see a path. Uh, my vote is D'Amico Ryan's as well, but I could see a path where Jim Harbaugh wins it if if the Chargers are a drastically are different team and make the playoffs. Yeah. I could see that happening. There's a path for that. But it also depends on what ends up what ends up happening in the league, that the, how the teams do, all of that uh, going forward. So I don't know. We'll we'll have to have to see how it kind of plays out. But I I definitely see there there being an opportunity. There could also there's a very small outside chance, especially with JJ McCarthy going down. Even though he was not deemed that he was going to be the starter to begin with. There's a chance if Minnesota is able to sneak into the playoffs, Kevin O'Connell could win it. Uh, just yeah. just with what he, you know, being able to lead that team. So, but yeah, my vote, D'Amico Ryan's definitely think that's going to happen. So, uh, yeah, anything else you wanted to cover? I know it was a bit of a longer episode we had here today. No, it was a, it was a good one. I uh, really like our picks. Uh, I... I like that you are doubling down year two for the Bengals. Yeah. And I, I hope that works out for you. I really I, do too. You couldn't do it with the Jets. Couldn't do it. So. No. Okay. The fact that I chose them to win the division, I already hate myself <laughs> for. Yeah. Uh, well, you got to live with yourself now. Uh, I do. I now, do. we will be back next week. Uh, actually, Ooh. we'll be filming an episode before the start of the NFL season, which is going to be great uh, because – We'll be able to to go over some maybe some fantasy tips stuff like that before we jump in. We'll ha- be back with some major league baseball coverage uh, as oh, we well. Can, uh, we can recap our fantasy drafts. Yeah. Oh that, man, that, that is going to yeah, be awesome. Maybe. Yeah. So, and I know many of you are going to be drafting for fantasy this coming weekend because it's the last weekend before obviously the start of the NFL season. Uh, yeah. Not this Thursday, but next Thursday. So, best of luck on those drafts. And if you have any questions, concerns, anything like that, go ahead and check out my YouTube channel because I cover some stuff on there for you. But, uh, Al, anything else you want to cover today? Yeah, you and I are both in two fantasy leagues this year uh, together. And uh, I just, I wish you the worst of luck. And that's that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to decide on what your punishment should be if you lose. If if one of us gets knocked out first... Can we just go on the record and say the other person can pick a punishment of what they need to do? Great. Um, Great. Even if that's going in the middle of the Blue Mosque and me singing, I don't know, uh, I Will Survive or something like that at the top of my lungs. Uh, We need to figure something out for that. So uh, other than that, 
Listen, it's been an awesome episode. I hope you guys were able to have some fun too. Let us know your predictions and your picks down below in the comments. Again, thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for the support. We really appreciate it. And I love you, brother. All right. I love you, man. Peace. All right. Peace.